Hey everybody, what's up and welcome to this video. It's gonna be a little bit of a shorter one, maybe a little bit different, but hopefully you get something out of this. Here's Craig. He kind of came up with the whole idea for the video, so yeah, he's kind of the brains behind everything. But anyway, we're gonna get right into this. So I just wanna talk about really quickly today, and if you can't see me, sorry, but that's not the point of this video. But today I really wanna talk about success and growth as a general and how different things are related to each other. I also wanna talk about the one thing that I was taught in school that kind of actually, now that I'm looking back on it, has really been helping me out in my business. And uh, if there's one subject in school that I would choose to keep learning, it'd be science. And I'll kind of explain that as we go along. So with success and with achieving success, it's going to be a up and down, up and down curve, right? Positives, negatives, successes, failures, wins and losses. And it's never going to be a straight up curve. But ideally, eventually, you want to get to your end goal. But, you know, achieving success isn't as simple as just going right up and just getting there, right? You, you got to practice, you got to test, you got to try new things, you got to figure out what you even want to achieve success with, how you're going to do it, and, and, and so on and so forth. So, you know, a lot of people are figuring out, okay, well, you know, I want to I want to make an extra $10,000 so I can invest in real estate and grow, right? Or I want to make just an extra 500 bucks a month just so I can pay rent, or, you know, I want to make a certain amount of money just to do something, right? I want to make a certain amount of money so I can buy an Xbox. So whatever you want to do, you want to achieve success somewhere. Everyone wants success and wants to achieve success. Reasons are obviously different. The first thing people will think about is, okay, well, how can I do it, right? Most of the time, they're going to start thinking of different tools, processes, and get kind of shiny object syndrome with that, you know? Oh, this says I can make money with this. This says I can do this. This says I can use this app to do this. This is how I can do it. Well, that's cool and all, and maybe it can work short term. I don't think it's going to help you long term. And the reason why is because it's not something that you can actually help people with. If you can help someone in any way, shape, or form, whether it's mowing their grass, doing yard work, which I used to do a lot, however you can help someone in return and get paid for it, that's kind of what you want to go with. As long as you are helping someone, you're helping a group of people, who it doesn't matter. As long as you are helping someone, that's what you want to focus on. Um, is helping and providing value while doing that. So how, how are you going to do this? Well, I think a really simple way to figure out how to do this and really to solve a lot of different problems and how to solve any problems, and let me just back this up real quick, is by implementing the scientific method, okay? And this is why I say if this is one thing that really helped me out in school was learning the scientific method. And if there was one subject that I would continue to want to learn, probably be science on a lower level. But here's why. Well, first of all, you're going to observe. You're going to observe. Maybe you're going to observe customers. Maybe you're going to observe your business, your life, the growth you want to get. If you want to change with anything, you're going to observe that, right? You're going to, or if you want to observe the goal you want to get. Okay. So I want to make an extra 500 bucks a month. Okay. So to make that, I'm obviously going to have to get someone to pay me. Well, someone has to pay me. doesn't matter where or how, but someone's going to have to pay me, right, to achieve that extra $500 a month, just as an example. Okay, so then you go to the hypothesis step, which is in the scientific method. Look it up. Um, you come to the hypothesis. Okay, well, I'm good at, I don't know, I'm, I'm good at sports. Or, uh, you know, I've been really good at football. I've been really good at rugby. I've been really good at basketball. Whatever it is, let's just use this as an example. Completely off the top of my head. What if I helped younger kids how to get better at football or basketball or whatever? You know, I've been pretty good, whatever. Whatever it is. Or uh, say, hey, you know, I can just do yard work. I got a few yard tools. I can just do mulching for some people. I'm not great at it, but, you know, it's not extremely difficult. I'll tell you that. It's not extremely difficult. That's your hypothesis. You're like, okay, let's see if I can help people with their yard work okay all right cool now you got to go test it do people actually want this do people actually need help with this is it evergreen is are you always going to be able to make 500 bucks a month with it so you just test it really simple go door to door around your neighborhood hey you know i'm trying to help people with their yard work if you ever need any help let me know go around the neighborhood hey cleaning cars whatever it is oh hey does your son or daughter play any sports oh i've been good at sports um, I'm like training them on like physical, I don't know. Okay. I'm, I'm all over the place, but 
you want to test it next. That's very, very important. And I'm going to pause when we go through the scientific method because that's where kind of a lot of people get stuck is they'll hypothesize about it, they'll hypothesize about it, they'll think about it, they'll think about it, they'll think about it. Maybe they'll even come up with some kind of a plan of action, but they'll never fully test it. And to fully test it, you have to do enough of it. You have to do a lot of it. And you have to discover the truth behind it. Okay, people want help with their yard work. Do they really want help with their yard work? Are they actually looking? Are people actually looking? And I'll tell you that most of the time people are looking for something for whatever you're trying to offer. You gotta test it out, right? You gotta test it a lot and look for the truth there. And on top of that, next, you gotta analyze it. Okay, well, from this, from this test, what happened from it? What were the results? What were my feedback? So this kind of loop, right, uh, this kind of line right here, and this is, the, this is the version one line, in a sense, and I'll explain that in a minute, but you have your hypothesis. Then, uh, what, what, you, what you wanna achieve or whatever it is, then you're getting feedback halfway up this line. From that feedback, sometimes you'll have to go right back to that hypothesis and you'll just have to keep on looping around this with feedback okay the feedback that you're getting you can craft your hypothesis you're going to test it obviously and then you're going to get feedback you got to loop back around and test that feedback and from there you'll keep going keep going keep going once you get a successful test well, you want to keep it going and eventually you're going to get your end result if your end result was positive then you know you can go to v2 where now with that positive result, you can come up with a new hypothesis. Well, how can I make this better? How can I make this result better? Okay, you test it. People do need help with their yard work. You analyze it. Cool, yeah, people actually said that they wanted help with their yard work. When I went and talked to people, people said they needed help with mulching and mowing the lawn. So you're gonna go and offer. Was it rejected or was it good? Yes, it was. Then you're gonna go observe it. You're actually gonna try it again. Scientific method. It works really, really well. And not just in trying to make money, but in trying to grow your mind which when you grow your mind, you'll grow everywhere as a whole. So it works the same way with everything. Business, if you wanna grow your business, you're gonna to have to do this and figure out what's working, what's not working. Now, that sounds all plain and simple, but where a lot of people get stuck is, okay, well now this isn't even working. You know, I've tried to make extra money, I've tried to grow my mind, I've tried to get more disciplined, I've tried to wake up more early, but it's just not working. Every time I try, it's never working. Nothing is working at all. This is where you gotta introduce these two things. It's variation and opposites. When you introduce a variation or an opposite of something, you're gonna get a different result. And you, you can implement it here, but this is a little bit easier. Like I said, up here, you gotta implement feedback. But easiest way to implement feedback and actually like figure out how to re-implement it is try the opposite of it or try um, putting some variety in there. So something really easy that you can go and do if you're trying to build a business, if you're trying to make a better mind, if you're trying to make money, whatever it is, something really simple you can do is just go on a piece of paper, go on your laptop, go on your phone, whatever, and write down or type in who you are, right? Type in your different attributes of who you think you are. Maybe go ask people, hey, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? And so on and so forth. Write those down, whatever those are, Try the opposites as well. You want to implement both because you'll notice if you keep on doing, let's take the scientific method as an example, right? If, if you observed something and tested it but kept doing the same hypothesis, you're just going to go on a loop and 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 it's never ever going to work, right? But if you observe something, try hypothesis, you test it, you analyze that test and it's, it, it comes back as, as a negative, right? It comes back as a negative. What you're gonna do from there is you, you obviously are gonna have to either change your test, your action that you're taking, or you're gonna have to change your hypothesis. You change one at a time, you don't wanna change two at once to figure out where the actual problem is, but you can't change both. Ideally, what you wanna start doing is introducing some opposites. Oh, my hypothesis was this, let me try a little variation of that. Maybe people don't want help with their yard work, people only really want help with the heavy yard work, like mulching, because when I was talking to people, they said they didn't need help with yard work, but a lot of people were saying stuff about mulching, especially in the summer, right? Or at least help with mulching, whatever. That's when you go back and rework your hypothesis. When you're going out and testing, like I said, you're obviously gonna need, say if it's money, you need someone to pay you, say, all right? Say it's mindset, you're gonna need to learn how to master your mind and get more disciplined. Most of the time it comes down to discipline. It's one of the really core things. You're gonna need to search for the truth. When you search for the truth, 
you're going to be able to understand, okay, well, what makes me disciplined? What truly doesn't make me disciplined? What's distracting me? Who, who, who needs these services? Do people even need these services? So on and so forth. Introducing variation and opposites is awesome. So in general, if you want to change, and most of the time, if you want to achieve success in any area of your life, you're going to have to change. You're not going to, if you, if you wanted to make a million dollars, you would have made it by now if you were the person that you needed to be to make that a million dollars. You're gonna be a different person. So change, change who you are, but you don't have to completely change drastically who you are. You wanna introduce the opposites into your life. So say if someone says you're really outgoing, start to introduce a little bit more, uh, um, be more of an introvert in a sense, right? You know, stay back, assess things a little bit more. Don't talk all the time or whatever it is, right? Um, introduce those opposites because we're, you're not gonna be who you are now when you want success. It doesn't say you're gonna be some really crazy person, but you're gonna be different. And it's, it's really important to understand that. And you know, us as humans, we're not always the same. We're always growing and changing. So you know, you don't wanna stick with the person of who you are if, if you want success. So anyway, more of the story here. If you want success, if you want some growth, you don't need any crazy tools. You don't need any crazy processes. You don't need the newest whatever it is, right? Um, all you need is the truth. You need to test, 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 test from the feedback that you get, whatever you want to achieve. You want to, first of all, let me start over. You want to define your goal, define what you want to achieve, define your vision, paint it out and, and figure out what it is, right? From there, you're going to hypothesize or, or think, okay, well, what can I do to get there, right? Oh, maybe I can do this, okay? Test it. Get the feedback and then implement that feedback. That's very, very important. You actually have to implement it and you have to track what feedback you're getting, right? Analyze it. Good or no, positive or negative, rejected or accepted, go back to the drawing board. So you wanna keep doing it. It's gonna be up and down like this, but eventually you're gonna get these lines and you'll have V2, you'll have a V3 line, you have a version four and then you'll keep going on and on and on. So I really urge you guys to try that. Let me know how it works out and uh, Craig will tell you that this stuff works really well and he's hiding. There he is. Try that out, guys. Let me know what you think. See ya.